What's up, devs? It is February 5th. Everyone's talking about Apple Vision Pro, and this is .m Daily. Well, at least weekly, but hopefully we'll be daily. Anyways, I want to show you what we've been up to because we've been up to a lot. So I want to show you the latest thing we're working on called .mvx. I'll bring you here. So it is a better .env, right? Just trying to make .env a little better. <laughs> That's what I'm always trying to do. So it's a better .env. I'm going to show you how it can run anywhere. It's cross-platform. It's also multi-environment and there's encrypted ENVs. I don't think we're going to get into the other two, those last two today, but let's just show you run anywhere. So uh, let's start off with the install of this better .env, .envx. And I really do think it's better. I'm using it in almost all my stuff now. Uh, it's been built out kind of over the last three months. I've pretty much switched everything to it because then I don't need .env in there and I can use .envx everywhere. So first of all, you can install it just like you do with NPM. Uh, it's just instead of .env dash dash save, it's at .envx, .envx. So we can take a look at that. All right, and it's here. So you can install it that way and use it very similar to how you use .env. You still do like the require, right? Um, and then console log and you know move on from there. But the way I'm recommending going forward, the way I'm using it is do a global install. Um, and there's tons of ways to do a global install. Brew is probably like the easiest, right? Going with Brew, but you can also do curl. There's a Docker image. There's an execut executable for Windows. There's a Heroku add-on. Um, there's a binary, right? Um, you can do, use it with the new package X, which is great. So <clears throat> there's all these ways to use it or get it installed globally. And so once it's installed globally, you can just check that you've got it. So I've got mine here. All right, 14.1. And then let me just show you usage because usage is straightforward. If you've used .env, I'm, I'm assuming you've used .env if you're seeing this video. So let's create a .env file. And let me go to here. Fifth, uh, I'll just make a directory called like test one. Put everything in there. So create a .env file. It's there. Hello world. Great. And let's create this little hello world script. Great. Hello process env. Hello. All right. And so if I do node, I'm gonna get hello undefined, as we know. But I can use .envx and just put .envx run dash dash in front of it. And you can put that in front of any command actually. So this is a node example. I'll show Python after this, but it could be any command. So you can inject .env files and like inject your environment variables ahead of anything, which is kind of cool. So we'll do this, node index.js. And we get this little notice injecting env one, because we only had one in there and we get hello world, right? We can add a new one, so secret. You know, some secret. And that one should say now it's injected too, right? Because we injected secret there. And we can do more than that. We can add debug, right, as a flag and get all kinds of information of, okay, here's where the file's located. Uh, here is what it got parsed to. Hello was set. It was set to world. It was set to secret. You can change that debug to not be so, uh, so much information like you know, showing the secrets. So we could just do verbose and we can see hello got set, secret got set. We can do more than that. Like let's say hello is already set, you know, as universe or production, right? On your production server or something like that. Uh, we can do debug here. And we can see that, oh, hello pre-exists. So there's all kinds of extra tooling you get with .mvx just when you're parsing your .m file, right? So that's like all we're doing, but we're getting all this extra information to help us uh, see what's going wrong or, you know, just help us step through to make sure everything's like kosher. So we get the tip here to use overload. And, and so the tool also tries to help you along the way, like give you tips as you're using something. So this pre-exists, so it must already be on the server. If you really want to overload it from your .m file, pass the overload flag, right? And now we're back to hello world, right? Not hello production. 
So that's it. I mean, I'll show you, I guess, a Python example real fast too. We've got all kinds of examples, Rust, right, Go. You can use this with whatever language you're moving to, whatever framework you're moving to. We've got all kinds of framework examples and framework guides. Uh, so a lot of cool stuff here. And uh, check it out because I'm really liking it. I'm building it for myself. I'm really liking it. Starting to move a lot of stuff there um, and hoping to tell more about it soon. So enjoy, guys. Have a good night and uh, maybe see you tomorrow on Tuesday.